I wanted to use the milling machine, but I kept getting these joints here of following error. And a blinking LED on the driver. It turns out that there is a problem with the encoder on the motor. The differential driver here has four differential outputs. It uses two of them and one is failed. So there are in fact two that are still working. So with a bit of micro soldering I have uh, added a few cables here to make use of one of the other. Still working units here. Yeah, until I get a real replacement. So let's see if this works. If you don't see this, then it uh, failed. That was a partial success and partial failure. One of the two differential signals were bad, so there is obviously a more general problem with this chip. The output from the encoder reader uses the standard logic format. Uh, there is one signal that goes between 0 and 5 volts. The differential signals on the other hand, there are two signals. When one is high, the other is low. I tried with another differential line driver and just to make sure that uh, actually was the line driver that was the problem. If it doesn't work, I will not send it. Let's try a job one and a tenth of a millimeter in the x axis. Wow! <laughs> At least it worked. Okay, does it move? That is a question. Uh, and there is no feed, uh, feedback uh, through the linear scale, so it will not stop ever. But yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, better stop it. And with the feedback activated, does it work to take one tenth of a millimeter? Yeah, it seems so, but what a boring figure. So if I show it here instead, let's go one millimeter plus X. Yeah. And minus X, yeah, excellent. Excellent, so then it was actually, the error was in the, in the differential line driver. So that will be permanently fixed in a short while. After a few days, the new ship arrived in the post, cleaning the PCB, and soldered the new ship in place. Put back the cover on the motor, fix the cables, and with that, the, this problem is solved. So I'm starting to finalize the homing of the axis. With the linear encoders, I can now have a very precise uh, homing position. Every 50 millimeters, the encoder will generate an index pulse. Uh, and it is a very precise location and that will be used for the homing. The way it works is that the axis will move and trigger the home switch. After that the axis will start a search for the index pulse and dependent on which direction is the shortest for the index pulse it can uh, take shorter or longer time. So therefore I have extended the position here for the y-axis uh, home switch. You will see shortly why. And there is finally the index pulse and the axis is now hold. In this direction the index pulse is found almost immediately and the axis is now hold. For the same reason the home switch for the Z axis was moved, but the home switch position for the X axis was ok. I took the opportunity to adjust the gibbs on the X and Y axis. There isn't much to say about that, but on the Z-axis there is more to say. The wooden piece will support the milling head here in order to offload the slideways. And the bellow will have to be removed because it covers the adjustment screws for the game. Loosening the top adjustment screw for the gib.
And here is the problem. The head of that adjustment screw was broken. Can I get the screw out or is it stuck? So the screw has a special head. I start making a new screw here. I use C45 steel and that is a medium carbon steel here. My intention is to harden that screw. Uh, not really for hardness but more for toughness. <laughs> that piece wasn't sharp. Slightly oversized, but it will be fine. I have connected up the remaining five oiler points here to this container here, and I'm filling up with oil in each of them. So it will be a gravity fed lubrication here, and at this point, I just want to fill the hoses. And all this is in preparation to start using the machine here because I want to make the groove in the head of that new screw. A temporary adjustment screw is inserted. Yeah, so when I started the spindle motor it made some weird noises and was running slow and with no power. And while trying to fix the problem, I, I took the opportunity to rip out the two-speed switch. And in the end it turned out that I had forgotten how it was connected from the start. And I obviously cannot read instructions on the back side of our cover. I had set up so I could record the maximum and minimum following error during this operation. And here is the result. Not sure really what to say about this because it also includes the fast traveling speeds here. The groove is 1.7 mm wide here and I do that with a 1 mm end mill. It takes a time.
Yeah, the groove looks fine. And recorded maximum following error during this whole operation, including the fast travel. Mm, not sure what to say really. Okay, um, hardening of the screw for toughness. This means heating up to 850 degrees and soaking there for half an hour. And uh, quench in water. Immediately followed by tempering in 600 degrees for an hour. I think this is called uh, tough tempering. And here is the result. It isn't really soft anymore, but a file will bite into the surface. Um, an interesting question is if it is possible to run the axis without this screw. And uh, for that I can say a clear and definitive no, it is not. I, uh, because I tried. The whole axis is up for me and I had to use a hammer to get the gib in the right position again. Uh, I think this is it for this video. Thanks for watching.